Uh, my name is uh, Vladimir. I am working for Elcom Soft Company uh, based in Moscow, Russia. I'll briefly introduce uh, myself or, or better our company. Uh, uh, here is just, just a brief list of, of our customers, some of them. Uh, what we are doing is uh, password cracking and data decryption, uh, mobile forensics and cloud forensics. Uh, I will tell about uh, some aspects of uh, cloud forensics we recently discovered. Uh, I will start with uh, uh, some information on what, what data is stored on the smartphones. Uh, you probably know. Now it's actually much more than, than probably even on the computer. You have everything in there, including your mails, your data documents, uh, history. And uh, now mobile devices are being even more widely used for the, for the internet than desktop PCs. And so everything is in there, including the passwords and, and some other critical data. What our uh, customers uh, from, from law enforcement are mostly interested in and in how to extract and how to decrypt that information, there are several methods available and uh, they're all completely different. The, the, probably the best one, if, if of course it is compatible, is a JTAG or chip off. When I, when I create a, a copy of the, uh, of the memory chip of the device and you have bit by bit image, uh, there is quite a lot of problems there. Uh, most of the devices are not vulnerable to that kind of, well, that's not an attack, that's a method. But I have to connect to JTAG um, uh, debug port, uh, which is available on some of the smartphones. Or you can just take the chip off and insert it into the controller and, and copy the whole memory. But the problem is that most modern smartphones are using encryption now. Uh, for the iPhones, it has started in iPhone 4, and chip off method is completely useless. For Android phones, the encryption is available since uh, Android version 4.4, I think. It was optional, and it was easily actually crackable because it was based only on the passcode on the, on the device. Starting f f with Android version 5, the encryption is, is strong and b based also on the hardware key. But still, the attacks uh, for the some Android devices based on some, some chipsets are still available. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, the BlackBerry smartphones, which are considered to be the, the, the strongest one, the most safe one, uh, they, they all can be, can be uh, broken with, with that method. Uh, there is no way to break the passcode on the BlackBerry, but you can just take out the memory chip and, and copy it. Uh, there is also a physical extraction method which uh, also uh, doesn't work on many devices, especially on the modern uh, iPhones. Uh, when it doesn't work, the law enforcement um, uh, goes with uh, logical acquisition, which gets much less information than, than physical, and also not, not always uh, available. And the method uh, which is being uh, more and more widely used now is the cloud acquisition. Uh, there are uh, several cloud services, you, you, and you might be confused with uh, all of them. The device can create a backup uh, to the cloud. Uh, device can sync some information between the device and the cloud storage, or the, the cloud storage can be used just to, to store some, uh, some, some documents, like in, like in Dropbox or something like that. Uh, there are uh, different pl uh, platforms for uh, Google, uh, Apple, and Microsoft are major players on, on that market, speaking of the, uh, uh, of the smartphones. Uh, but still, the, there is quite a lot of uh, other cloud services, especially in China. You probably know that Google is prohibited in China, and there are about 20 different uh, manufacturers uh, that are using their own clouds, and, and they also uh, work a different way. Uh, the, the, the best thing about the, uh, about the cloud that you don't need access to the physical device itself. You can get everything uh, right from the cloud storage. And sometimes, as we'll show, there is even more information there in the cloud than on the device itself. Uh, extracting backups from the cloud also works, but there is no way to force the uh, the device remotely to create backups, and, and many people don't use uh, cloud backups at all. 
but still our cloud backups contain uh, almost almost the complete data uh, from the device especially for apple devices for for google and microsoft there is a different different thing also all kind of devices use not not only backups but also some kind of syncing the information between the device and the cloud and in contrary to backups where you have to um, force the creating backups the syncing is usually being done uh, without any intervention uh, with the user and uh, without any options to set and, and, and so on. You just turn and turn, turn, set up your account at Google, Apple or Microsoft and device immediately starts syncing quite a lot of information. Uh, as I said, for Apple devices, uh, backups are probably the most advanced and they create exactly the same snapshot of their device as uh, for local backups, but uh, those backups do not include the third-party application data. Uh, passwords from different applications, accounts, and so on are not always being saved to, to the cloud, or uh, if they are, uh, then usually additional encryption is being used, which is stronger than for the, most of the, for the rest of the data on the device. Uh, backups are being created daily, usually at least for Microsoft or for uh, Google and Apple. For Microsoft, we, we won't able to find any information how the backups are being created. Uh, uh, there is no standard way to download uh, smartphone backups from the cloud, and it can be done only using some third, third party software. By default, you, you can only, by design, you can only restore from the cloud backup uh, directly to the device, but that's not, uh, that's long, takes quite a lot of time, depends on the connection, and not, not, not really safe. And there is uh, no vendor provides any way to manage uh, backup in the cloud. You can only delete the backups you don't need anymore. Uh, speaking of the uh, data that is being synced, we see more and more. Uh, it has started uh, with just contacts and calendars uh, several years ago. Now there is much more information stored on the, on the cloud, even if you don't enable backup of, or set the option to not to create the cloud backups. There are call logs, uh, not only for JSM connections, but also for third party uh, calling like uh, voice over IP. Uh, there is mail, uh, but not, not all the mail accounts, of course, but only those that are cloud-based uh, and provided by the, by the vendor. There are media files, uh, there is information on the home devices, there is something about the, your health data, uh, your internet activities, what websites have you visited and what you have searched for. Uh, for, for Apple, for example, there is even more. And it is described partially on the Apple website. Uh, you can find that information on the uh, Apple website uh, that is dedicated for law enforcement. They describe the process, what information Apple can provide by legal requests and, and uh, uh, how, what is the process, how, how to obtain that data. And by analyzing that document, uh, you can understand what information except backups and sync data is being stored on the on the Apple services. Uh, here is a kind of uh, comparison of the three major uh, players. Uh, Microsoft actually is almost dead speaking of the uh, uh, smartphones and uh, mobile devices. Windows 10 mobile is still available but not being widely used. I think it's less than one percent now but still we have uh, explored it uh, a bit. Uh, here is information on, 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 on backups. Apple, Apple creates uh, three last backups uh, uh, from their device. Uh, Google, uh, there is no such thing as, as complete backup, uh, unfortunately, and uh, there is only a single snapshot. For Microsoft, there are several snapshots. Uh, maximum we have seen is, I think, 30, 13 different snapshots made, made in, just, in just two weeks. Uh, of course, all of them are syncing the c c contacts and calendars. Uh, about call log, that's, that, that's actually funny. Apple doesn't say anywhere that it's uh, syncing the call log uh, between the device and the cloud, and there is absolutely no way to disable that. 
Whatever you do, if you have the iCloud uh, account set up on your uh, iPhone, then your call log goes to the iCloud and being stored there, I think now for two weeks at least. Uh, for Google, uh, we have found that it is also uploading the call log to the, uh, to the Google services about a year ago and we have implemented the way to download it but about a month ago it has disappeared. I have no idea why. For Microsoft call log is stored in the kind of backups that is, that is provided. And here is some information on the other data. Uh, for example, for, for Android, uh, about two months ago, we have uh, found a way to extract from the, from the Google account the uh, SMS messages. They are somehow being, being seen, synced with the Google. That's not for all the devices. That's for most uh, ones who are running Android version 7 and 7.1, but not all of them. Some of the uh, Chinese devices working even on, on Android 6, if you install the custom, uh, custom uh, 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 firmware, it is, uh, it is uh, uploading the SMS to the... Uh, Android account, but but still, uh, some devices like Nexus Nexus 6 uh, don't have the SMS available there. And you have the other other data for the internet, for example. Of course, for Apple it is Safari, for Google it is Chrome, for for Microsoft it is Edge, and sometimes Internet uh, Explorer as well. Uh, now the most interesting part, the the passwords. Uh, all three vendors are using different approaches on storing and encrypting the, this critical data. Uh, uh, there are several different passwords to Wi-Fi networks, to websites you enter, the credit card information. I have added it to the, to the passwords category uh, because it is being saved about the same way. Uh, there are also application-specific passwords, which are actually uh, much harder to extract. Uh, but mostly because the vendors don't follow the suggestions uh, by the uh, developer and, and do, don't store the password the, the right way. Some, sometimes they're in just some configuration files. Uh, so for application-specific passwords, there is a, uh, no 100% uh, warranty that the passwords are there. Uh, there could be also uh, in the cloud stores the encryption keys, uh, certificates, and authentication tokens. For example, if you analyze the how, how Facebook and Twitter and other social networks are saving their credentials into the cloud storage, you will find that uh, the passwords are not there and there is absolutely no way to get them. But on the device and uh, in the cloud backup, there is an authentication token which can be used to to access that account and download or just view everything. And there are also after complete uh, text that may contain passwords and, and other critical information. Uh, uh, speaking of Apple, the, the main storage for the passwords and passwords and uh, encryption keys and other data is a keychain. It has appeared in MacOS operating system first and uh, it, it works about, it, it is about the same in us uh, operating system. And uh, there is a difference uh, between how the keychain is encrypted in the local backups and uh, depending on whether backup is password protected or not, and uh, in the iCloud uh, keychain. Uh, you can view what, what passwords and um, Credit cards are stored on the on your iPhone and are being synced with the cloud by just uh, looking at the options. But there is there is no way to view the complete data stored in the iOS keychain, and there is no way to export. You can only use the third-party software. For MacOS, uh, there is about the same. You you can view all the data completely just uh, by entering the password to your. Uh, mm, uh, to your system, but there is also no way to export. And for iCloud keychain, there is no way to view or to download at all. All you can do is to sync the uh, iCloud passwords with the device and then view them from the local keychain. There is also a difference between what passwords and what other data is stored in backup keychain in, and in the iCloud keychain. 
when we say backup, we mean not only local backup, but also the iCloud backup. But the keychain stored in the iCloud backup is different from the from the iCloud keychain. It, 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 it's not at the first time, not not a very easy concept. Uh, but but still, the, these are completely different things. Uh, keychain and backup is just a just a file that a part of the backup and that is being uploaded uh, along with all other files. Uh, here is the uh, the contents, uh, the part of the content of the uh, keychain from uh, iOS operating system. Uh, here is uh, from a Wi-Fi access point where you have the access point name and password. Here is the password for the email account set at, 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 at Google and here is a password to generic uh, IMAP account, which is, which is in fact uh, also Google. You have some, some additional data like protocol and, and things like that as well. Uh, and uh, so speaking of the uh, credit card data, it is also stored in the, in the keychain, in a local keychain, in the keychain which is part of the iCloud backup and in, in the uh, iCloud keychain as well. We have that name on the card, the expiration date, the um, card type, and, and the number. Uh, why why uh, there are different encryptions in the, in, in the keychain? Uh, there are different uh, attributes on the, on the data stored in the keychain, and uh, some of them are being set by the operating system itself. And speaking of the third party software, the developer himself can uh, uh, decide how he, uh, he wish to, to store that data. If it is uh, completely, uh, I would say, private, he set one of the attributes uh, that includes the, sorry, uh, uh, this device only, and then this data can be decrypted only by the exactly the same device. And if you restore from backup uh, to the other device, the data will be decrypted there. And uh, that happens, for example, when you restore your uh, iPhone from the, from the iCloud backup, and you find that you have to enter all the passwords to mail accounts, Wi-Fi, and, and everything else uh, again one more time, because they're not being uh, decrypted on the different device. Uh, to, to get access to the keychain stored in the local backup, uh, you, you, you first uh, have to break the password on the backup itself. That was relatively easy in iOS version 3 and became five times stronger in iOS version 4. And um, that, that, that lasted for iOS version up to 10. In iOS 10, uh, Apple introduced the, I don't know, I don't know how to say that, vulnerability or weakness or whatever. And instead of performing the 10,000 uh, iterations of SHA-1, they also s managed to store in one, one other database the single SHA-256 uh, SHA, uh, hash, which is obviously very easy to break at, at decent speed at millions, tens of millions of passwords uh, per second. Uh, they reverted it back in iOS version 10.1, after we released the software that was able to break the uh, passwords uh, effectively. And in iOS version 10.2, there is actually a nightmare to, to break the password. The speed on the uh, usual average PC is now only five passwords per minute, which is extremely slow. And even on the fast uh, GPU card, we can only get, say, from 50 passwords to maybe 100 passwords uh, per second. And of course, all hashes are sorted and there is no way to create the uh, rainbow tables. Uh, here is how Keychain looks like in MacOS operating system. As I said, it's very easy to browse. And once you open any item, you'll have to, sorry, to supply the, the password, your login password to MacOS and, and you see the uh, after that, you see the password to, to that data. Uh, now about iCloud data protection. There is an article on Microsoft, and the, the, the link is there, that uh, 
uh, explains uh, briefly, not in details and not technically, how information is encrypted. And it says uh, that it uses um, uh, advanced encryption standard with uh, 128 or 256-bit keys. Uh, it doesn't say anything uh, else, and uh, that's not really good. Uh, because speaking of the iCloud uh, backups, uh, it doesn't matter actually how strong your uh, encryption algorithm is, but in the iCloud for backups, the key to decrypt backups are stored along with the data. And, and so once you've got access to the iCloud and so you download all the data, you get the encryption keys and uh, you decrypt the, the data stored in backup. But there are still problems. Um, well, of course, the uh, iCloud keychain and, and uh, keychain in general is, is stored much stronger. Uh, I'll explain how. And so once the uh, iCloud storage uh, is being accessed by someone else using password or uh, authentication key or authentication token or whatever, the owner of the account immediately receives the notification that uh, his account is, is being accessed. Uh, there are also additional protections uh, starting from uh, two-step verification introduced by Apple's, uh, I think, three years ago or so. The first time it didn't uh, protect backups, but only the sync data. But uh, then after probably uh, Celebgate, you, you remember that, uh, they, they also added the two-factor authentication, which is, which is actually stronger. The only way to get access to, to the iCloud account protected with uh, 2FA is use the authentication token instead of the password. And it is actually faster, easier, it doesn't force any emails or notification coming to the other devices and so on. The question is where to get the token. It's not that hard. Uh, you can extract the token from the other device and uh, best of all from the PC or Mac computer that the same account has been used. Uh, here is a, a kind of notification. I, uh, I was trying to, to download my own backups with, with uh, my, our own software just two hours ago. And of course, I immediately received the notification that my account is being accessed from, uh, from Netherlands. Uh, to set up the iCloud keychain, to have you also not uh, only the general data synced with the cloud, but also the, your passwords and encryption keys, you have to set up at first. There is a way to do that for the account without two-factor authentication. You'll have to uh, select the security code, and Apple says that it is optional, and you, you may not, not to, uh, to, to set the security code at all. But in that case, once every new device will be connected to the same account and to to be synced, um, uh, to have the iCloud keychain synced, you will have to uh, manually confirm from the other de uh, device. Uh, but the profit of uh, uh, using the security code that uh, 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 not only that uh, uh, you can set it up on the other device uh, uh, without the approval, but also if you set the security code, then uh, the uh, iCloud keychain is also uploaded to so-called Apple uh, escrow service and store it in the iCloud. So in the worst case, if you lose uh, everything, all of your devices, including even the phone number, uh, you will be able still to restore that, that data with the help of, of Apple. And you can select to, uh, what security code to use. It can be complex or random, or you can uh, create your own, or you, you have not, not to create. Uh, but then you got actually you you you, you will get uh, man, man, many problems. It's it's not easy to set up. You'll get many confusing messages. Uh, you'll be asked, uh, well, would you like to use the passcode to your device as your security code? Which I don't know whether it is a good idea or not. Probably not. And 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 so it's not recommended at all to set up the iCloud keychain with without the. Uh, two-factor authentication. With uh, two-factor authentication, it is much easier. Uh, you only have to remember that two-factor authentication can be enabled for the iCloud only from the device itself. You cannot set it up on iCloud.com website. 
you have to, to, to take one of your devices and go to a cloud settings there. And uh, it's then easy, you will have to set up the trusted phone number uh, to, to receive the SMS, uh, to receive this, uh, the codes by SMS in the case if the trusted device is um, uh, not available. So it's much easier, it is, everything is obvious how, how to set it up, but, 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 but still, that's probably not the best solution because the security of the iCloud keychain actually depends on whether two-factor authentication is being used, uh, uh, used or not. The other thing is when you uh, set up the new device to the same account with a two-factor authentication enabled, you will also have to enter the passcode on, on, of one of your devices, the other device. Uh, and that may be the iPhone, iPad, even iPod Touch, or the Mac computer, and you can select uh, what passcode to, to enter. So yeah, you can see three of my devices, iPad, and uh, my home Mac, and, and the iPhone. That, when, uh, that what's happened when I tried to set up the a cloud keychain on the new device. Uh, if you want to understand how the cloud keychain actually works, the, the good document to, to start with is the iOS security guide, uh, which has been updated uh, reflecting the iOS 10 changes only about two months ago or so. Uh, it, it's not very technical, uh, speak, speaking of the iCloud keychain, but it describes two, two main things, how, how passwords in the iCloud keychain are being synced and what, uh, how they can be recovered. Uh, keychain syncing uh, actually relies on the uh, so, so called a circle of trust. That's not my term, that's a term of uh, Microsoft. Oh, sorry, Apple. <laughs> uh, and uh, all the devices connected to the, to the iCloud account, and if, if 2FA is enabled, create a, 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 a circle of trust. So when uh, uh, any device uh, uh, from that circle can be used to, uh, to confirm adding the new device to the same circle. And the circle of trust it is um, assigned two times with a, a public key, which is specific to every device as a syncing uh, identity, and using a private key, which is strong and can be broken. It is uh, based on uh, elliptical uh, cryptography with uh, 256 keys, which is even much stronger than uh, advanced encryption um, uh, standard. And uh, not all the items are being synced with iCloud Keychain, but only those that, uh, that has the uh, KSEC attributes uh, synchronizable. And uh, that's why when you uh, set up a new device, set up the iCloud Keychain, and still some applications uh, will require you um, to enter the password uh, once again. Uh, there is also a very briefly described the method of the keychain recovery in the, in the case uh, 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 if you uh, want to restore to the, uh, uh, the keychain to the new, new device. And here the iCloud security code I mentioned uh, before is, is, is needed, but it is only needed uh, if the account uh, doesn't have the two-factor authentication enabled. And without that code, you, you can um, browse inside the, well, go inside the cloud keychain. Uh, it also mentions uh, the hardware security model uh, in, the, in the document, saying that everything is stored completely secure. That's not a, just a simple database, that a special hardware device, and it erases all the cont content of the device after several uh, unsuccessful attempts. But there is absolutely no information what the device is and is it real or not. We don't know. Uh, there is also a special um, service uh, established in the iCloud called Escrow Proxy, uh, which works uh, through the uh, really secure uh, SRP uh, protocol. It is completely safe from the man the middle attacks and there is no way to, to insert your own uh, certificate in the chain and so decrypt the data that is being transferred. The password of course also not being transferred and uh, not being saved uh, anywhere uh, on Apple service. There is uh, something like a very basic block, block scheme of uh, uh, how, how it works. 
based on the uh, cloud security code after hashing with uh, uh, SHA algorithms with uh, many iterations, 10,000 10, to make it harder to break for using brute force. And the uh, key back key uh, is uh, actually the key to to decrypt the key back itself and and, and then to using the uh, uh, then the encrypted key uh, is being saved to the to the escrow proxy established on at, at Apple. The protocol looks like follows. There are not so many commands running there. Uh, there is an enroll command to add new 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 records uh, to the keychain. There is a command to to get records from there. Uh, there is one more to uh, which is called get SMS targets, which provides uh, returns the list of all the trusted numbers, and then within, uh, using the uh, another common generate SMS challenge, you select the, the number uh, you wish, and uh, you return the SMS code for the next step uh, later. And there is a, uh, the, the, the probably the most interesting one is the uh, recover command. And that is the, the second step in the protocol, which actually recovers the, the data from the iCloud. From the escrow records, which are accessible easier, as I said, with two-factor authentication than, than for the accounts that uh, don't use it, we can get quite a lot of uh, information, information on, the, on the, what, what kind of key is used of protection, number of failed uh, attempts that have been uh, already performed. We also have the data on the, on the trusted devices, including the model version here, for, for example, MacBook, MacBook Air with the version and uh, with its name, and the list of the protected storage services uh, available there because they may be different for different accounts or for, for different, different, different versions. There is another slide on how uh, SRP uh, protocol uh, works, and, and uh, I'm not sure do you see it or not, but I can share the slides with you, and how the, uh, the device communicates with the iCloud and its uh, relationship uh, uh, with, with the proxy. And the important thing to know that uh, we, we can check whether the uh, secure backup records uh, exist, and uh, by existence of that record, we can understand whether the uh, iCloud security code is set in the case of no uh, 2FA, or uh, if it isn't set, then the 2FA is being used on the account. I have only three sli slides left. Uh, probably the most important uh, thing is that if two-factor authentication is enabled, Apple consider that your, your account is uh, absolutely secure and the uh, keychain uh, data also copied not, not just on, uh, across the devices but also stored, uh, stored in the uh, KVS which stands for K-value K, K K storage and there is a way to get it from there. So here is how keychain recovery works. You have to get account settings first. Uh, you, you supply the Apple ID and password, then you get the first token, then add some data. Uh, I omitted the, the code here, of course, but, but it's a, a, too, too complex to read. Then you get the token, and using that token, you can perform the sync and uh, initialization and um, uh, recover commands. But the, the most important thing that for uh, secure remote protocol, that, that part, which is uh, very hard to walk around, you have to confirm the code through, through SMS and you will also enter the special uh, cloud security code. But uh, if we already have the two-factor authentication passed and we have the, the authentication token for the iCloud, which is, which is normal for, for accessing the documents, backups, sync data and whatever, then it's make it much easier to almost uh, well, much easier to to break into KVS storage and download all the all the information from there. So, what are the alternatives of the, uh, accessing the keychain uh, this way? There is, of, co of course, you can add the new, for example, fake device to the circle of trust. Uh, but that is uh, easy to do from the point of protocol, but you'll have to pass that to factor authentication, and once you'll be uh, you, you'll try to, to add the new device, the notification will immediately appear on all the devices connected to the same account. 
You can download the iCloud backup and get keychain from there as far as the iCloud keychain is synced with the device keychain. Uh, but from the uh, backup keychain, uh, you will not be able to decrypt the, the, the data. Uh, that was possible only for all the devices up to iPhone 5 and 5C, which are 30 bit. From there, if you have the device in hands, it is possible to extract the, uh, the encryption key, uh, device specific encryption key from there and decrypt all the records. Or you can get the local backup from the computer that uh, our device has been connected to. Uh, and uh, if that uh, uh, backup is password protected and password is more or less easy to, to break, you, you will be able to browse most of the records from the uh, most of the records from the backup. Oh, finally, there is also a way to, to break the circle protocol, but I, I, I really doubt that it would be possible. We, we now have as many as six developers working on, on that, understanding how circle authentication works and, and how it is related with the k-value storage and uh, two-factor two authentication or so for, for about uh, four months, and we have not completed yet. We have found some way to access the, the, the data, and uh, now I'm sure that if you, if, if you have the, the token from the, from the device authenticated, uh, authenticated into the iCloud already, it is possible to, to extract uh, all the data from the iCloud. And uh, if the two-factor authentication is not enabled uh, and the uh, iCloud security code is not set at all, there is absolutely no way to decrypt that data. So that's, that's the very big difference. Thank you. That's it.